So unit 2.2 looks at the concept of forces, and this is gonna build off nicely from just looking at kinematics, and hopefully we're gonna understand now why things move and what's causing things to move instead of just looking at what their motion is. So a force in general is just a push or a pull. It is a vector value, so that means we have to make sure that we pay attention to not only the magnitude, but also the direction. <clears throat> we're gonna measure forces in something called Newtons, which is roughly the weight of an apple, uh, which is one Newton is going to be one kilogram per meter, uh, multiple, excuse me, one kilogram multiplied by meter per second squared. So some basic forces that we're going to deal with is the force of gravity, which the force of gravity is simply going to be an object's weight. If we think about when somebody steps on a scale, <clears throat> and they have their number here that gets recorded. The reason, <laughs> really little legs, the reason that they get, uh, that they have some weight is because essentially there is a force of gravity pushing down on them. There are little springs underneath this scale, and those compress when this object's weight is pushed down. If there was no force of gravity, there would be no weight. So, Weight and the force of gravity are going to be equivalent. They're equal to the mass of an object in kilograms multiplied by the gravitational acceleration, which we'll just use as little g, or you might see m acceleration due to gravity, which for myself is about 90 kilograms times 9.81, which is really close, again, because we can round this to about 10 for just some quick math. It's really close to about 90 newtons. Now, remember, the force of gravity always points straight down. The other common force we're going to run into is something called a contact force, uh, which is the normal force. All right, it's contact between objects, and it's always going to act perpendicular to a surface. So if we have just an object that is sitting on this flat surface, the normal force from the surface onto the blue object would be pushing up. If it's at on a ramp, the normal force is going to be pushing perpendicular to my surface, and so that's why it's pushing up at an angle. And then as we're going around roller coasters, right, our normal force is actually going to change. If we are going underneath a loop-the-loop, -loop, right, the carts is in contact with the uh, ramp here, and the ramp is actually going to be pushing down. And we'll talk more about that when we look at circular motion. If we're going over top of a hill, our normal force is going to be pushing up. And same thing here as we are going bottom of a hill, our normal force is also pushing up. And again, it's going to be perpendicular to wherever I am, right? If I had my object here, my normal force would be perpendicular to that surface there. And you could see it uh, signified as F with a subscript N, or just as a capital N as well. Either one of those are going to stand for my normal force. Another force that we're going to look at is something called tension. And that is simply the force that's going to be in a string uh, or in some cord due to the fact that there is, it is hanging uh, an object. So in this case, if we look at the, the forces on this hanging object, we would have the force of gravity pushing down. And then tension from the string is pulling up. And the tension would be pulling up on this object and it would be pulling down on the ceiling. Now, if we look at this scenario, and we just worry about the forces that are actually on the object itself, we could say that these two forces, the force of gravity and the force of tension, are going to be equal to each other <clears throat> in terms of their magnitudes, right? So the absolute value of them are equal to each other. They're obviously in opposite directions. And we could say that for the fact that because an object is at rest, the net force is going to be zero. And that means that all the forces have to balance out. And so that's gonna take us into Newton's first law. Now, you've learned Newton's laws in the past. You've know for an object at rest stays at rest, for an object in motion stays at motion, but we're gonna write them a little bit differently, just in a sense of we are focused on this equation, right? F equals MA. It's written in your reference booklet. Uh, and so we want to understand Newton's laws based upon this here. Newton's first law, an object at rest stays at rest, or an object in motion stays in motion, pretty much means uh, if something is 
staying in motion or at rest that its acceleration is zero. It is doing what it is already doing. So the Newton's first law we're going to write, if the net force is zero, then acceleration is zero. That means an object can have constant velocity or it can be at rest as long as the net force is zero. Newton's second law then is written as basically if F net is not zero, then an object will accelerate, and it's going to accelerate using this equation, F equals ma. And if we solve for A, we would get A equals the net force divided by my mass. So understand it's the net force on an object, not just a single force that causes it to accelerate, which means it can do one of three things. It can speed up, it can slow down, or it can change directions. Most of our time then is going to be set up trying to figure out the forces that are acting on an object, figure out if it meets Newton's first or second law scenario, and then predicting the motion based on the forces that are acting. Newton's third law then states, for as you've known it, as for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And basically what we're going to rewrite that as is forces come in action-reaction pairs, meaning whenever there is one force, there is a second. Force pairs are equal in size and opposite in direction, and probably the most misunderstood uh, concept is that these forces must act on different objects. Right? If we look at an object sitting on a table, we have our force of gravity pushing, pulling down, and we have a normal force pushing up. And those two forces are equal, which means the net force is zero. However, these are not Newton's third law pairs. Okay, these are not force pairs. And the reason is because they're both acting on the same object, right? For them to be Newton's third law for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. They must act on different objects. Forces are equal in size, uh, but the results are differ due to an object's mass. So if we think about that, some quick examples here. Okay, um, if we have <clears throat> two vehicles that are driving towards one another, <laughs> one with much larger mass. So this is a smaller mass. This is a larger mass. That is not an M. That's an M. Okay, uh, they're going to collide. And the force on each of them is going to be the same. Because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If this car hits this one and this car hits this one, the forces on each of them are the same. However, the accelerations are going to be much different. Right? This is going to have a much larger acceleration. This is going to have a much smaller acceleration. And that's just simply due to the fact that acceleration equals F over M. And so if we have a big F over little M, we get big A, and if we have big F over big M, we just get a normal size A. So even though their forces on them are exactly the same, it's the masses that cause them to be different, and these are action-reaction pairs for the fact that they act on different objects.